Tell us about the night that you went to the Pulse Club. Yes, so 2016 came around and I was fed up with the lifestyle already. I, I wanted to leave, I just couldn't find a way. Even though you're not telling anybody that. Yes, even though I'm not telling people, I'm fed up with it. I don't want to live in it, I miss God, I miss the worship. Because there's so, so much emptiness. It's emptiness, you know, you, um, you, there's a void that's mm -hmm. missing in there. And I remember in April of that year, I, I was praying and I said, Lord, you know I want to come back to you so bad. I just can't find the strength to do it. I don't know how to do it. And I said, I call this the d dangerous prayer. <laughs> I said, Lord, allow me to go through whatever you want me to go through for me to come back to you, yeah. and I don't care what it is. You know what that is? That's the whatever it takes prayer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, be careful yeah. about praying that prayer, yeah. whatever it takes. Yes, I said, Lord, just do what you have to do. Allow me, allow me. I'm not saying that he made that night happen. I said, mm -hmm. allow me to go through whatever I have to go through. Mm -hmm. And uh, two months later, June 12, 2016, came around a night that I will never forget, a night that I was having fun. I was having a blast with friends. That, uh, I'll be real. It was a great night. You were at one friends. party, right, to start yeah, with? I was, I was at a house party, uh, and there I actually crashed with my ministry partner now, which is Luis Ruiz, another okay. post survivor. Mm -hmm. uh, I crashed into him at the house party. And um, from there, we went to Pulse Nightclub, and at 202, everything changed. So tell us what happened. What do you remember about that night? And uh, I remember they, they called last call. I went ahead and got my last drink. I came back to the main floor in the club. Uh, we started saying our goodbyes, our hugs, our kisses. And 2.02 a.m., I heard a loud pop. I remember seeing an orange flash across my face. And I remember dropping my drink. I turned to my left, and I run about two or three steps. And instantly, I was being shot behind my legs. Uh, I had no idea that I was only... 10 feet away from the shooter. I was in the room where it all started. Mm. Uh, I remember falling down and within seconds, the club is in chaos. Everyone is running everywhere. And where were you shot at first? Um, at that moment, it was behind my right leg. Okay, so then you fell. I fell. You fell from the shot. Yeah. And so were there people falling around you? Yes, people falling around me. Uh, at that moment, I tried to get back up, but everyone's running over each other, jumping over each other. Panic. They were panicking, yeah. and I remember feeling a heavy foot in behind my left femur, and over the music, over the screams, I hear a loud snap, and I felt the most excruciating pain. And you know, um, someone just stepped on my femur; they broke it in half. Oh. So now I'm, sh I'm, I've been shot a few times so in my right leg. So people are running, and you're laying, and then they yeah. actually broke your leg. Yeah. <gasps> Uh, my goodness. That's the strongest bone in your body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not to mention what you're feeling from the gunshot wound. Right? Yes, yeah, so now I'm, I'm going numb. I'm in the floor. I can't move. I can't go anywhere. All I could do was look up, and every time I looked up, I just see bodies falling one by one. Mm. Everyone's trying to run out the same door, uh, and uh, people are just falling next to me. A lady falls next to me, and uh, she's panicking. I grab her hand, and I tell her, we're going to be okay. And at that moment, the shooter's outside. I can hear shots going outside. I pick my head up and I look around and I just see bodies everywhere. Uh, people are barely moving. It's quiet in there. Uh, I'm trying to pinch myself, telling me, you know, I'm telling myself, Angel, this is a nightmare. This is a nightmare. Just wake up. And I never woke up. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was trying to, to console the lady next to me, telling her, we're going to be just fine. Mm -hmm. She's in pain. She's panicking. Mm -hmm. I tell her, you just have to relax. We're going to be fine. We're going to get out of here. And at that moment, I hear footsteps coming in and I start hearing pops. And this time it's slower. So I was thinking to myself, why, why is, it, it doesn't sound the same. I don't know what's going on. And I kept on hearing a pop and pop. And now I'm realizing he's shooting at everyone who's on the floor. He's making sure that we're all dead now. Mm. And I can feel the shots closer. And, and closer. so you actually, during this time, I know everything's happening so fast and it's so chaotic. But you were actually praying mm -hmm. at this time. Tell me, what were you saying to the Lord? So when he got close to me, I remember I told the lady, close your eyes and pretend you're dead. And I remember I did that. I put my hand on my face. I held my breath. I said, angel, pretend you're dead. And at that moment, I heard a loud pop. And I opened my eyes and I see the body of the lady jump up and down. Mm. Her hand lets loose of my hand and her eyes just close. And you knew she was and gone. And I knew she was gone. Uh, at that moment, in the inside, I'm panicking, thinking to myself, I'm next. And 
there I could feel him right behind me. I can feel him right behind me, uh, but nothing was happening. So I thought to myself, okay, Lord, this is the moment you're giving me to make peace with you because I'm about to die. He's standing right behind me. There's nothing covering me. And I started praying to the Lord. I started asking for forgiveness. I started telling him, Lord, I'm sorry that I left you because you never left me. Mm. You never left my side. I made the decision to leave you, but please forgive me and take me with you. Mm. But nothing was happening. No gunshots were going on. I said, what's, what's going on? A couple minutes went by and something changed. The atmosphere, I felt like there was spiritual warfare going on on top mm. of me. Mm -hmm. And I changed my prayer and I started to prophesy over my life. I said, Lord, no, I'm not going to leave here dead today. I'm going to leave here alive. And when I leave here alive, I'm going to worship you for the mm -hmm. rest of my life. Mm -hmm. I'm going to testify to the world yes. yeah. what you Ooh, did in on, my yeah. life. And I kept Glory. on prophesying and I could feel the spiritual warfare going on. And at, that, at the moment that I said, amen, I heard a loud pop and I felt my body jump up and down. I felt pain and heat in the midsection of my body. And I just saw black. And I, th I thought to myself, you're dead. You're dead. I didn't scream. I didn't move. Only the Lord gave me that strength to not move. I, I took the pain. I saw black until I heard footsteps walking away. And I opened my eyes and all I could do was thank God.